fox neck snared here just on a simple track that I made myself and it's heading to the ground with a simple air tanker. Uh, the snare's down probably about a month, I'd probably catch four or five here a year on this particular run. He ain't going nowhere. I'm getting dispatched and get a reset and I'll show you the makeup. Fox has been dispatched as I said in the video. It's perfectly caught around the neck. That's a homemade snare. Okay, two mil stainless steel galvanized wire, one by 19. Okay, I make all my own snares, all made according to the Irish law. All right, don't be the, the gobshite that fucking brings heat on and everybody in the community by fucking making up snares that don't comply with Irish law. So that being said, job's done, stop is done what it was supposed to do. You seen the fox yesterday, he was alive, we dispatched him. Going on to make the remake now. Tools I use for this, air tanker, homemade, three mil galvanized wire, a nut, some tubing, while it, and that's it. Okay, but you need to sink that then, a bit of rebar, with a similar angle, cut onto the end, the other piping welded to put uh, the stake. That slides on to this. Apologies now, I'm trying to do this one handed here. Okay, drive that down into the ground to a depth that you're happy that you may only have a couple of inches left out of the ground. You attach your snare onto here. What happens then is when that goes into the ground, it's sitting like that. Okay, what you do then is take this loop, put it around the bar. Put a hand either side and pull up. What that forces this to do is rotate in the ground. So as it's coming up, it rotates and it'll sit like that in the ground, down foot, 18 inches, whatever length you desire. That there is solid. I've yet to lose an earth anchor in the 20 plus years I'm at this. I've yet to lose one of these due to an animal taking it. Okay. So an absolute great piece of kit. It doesn't have to be a round piece of pipe, it can be inch box tubing. This is just what I had in the shed to use the day I was making these up. Okay, and that's all I have here. I've just drove down into the ground, gone through the process like I said, pulled up, rotate around, attached my snare. I then got a piece of 2.5mm high tensile galvanized wire, cut approximately two and a half, three foot, because this is soft enough ground here. I put like um like a D shape in the bottom and loop it round, then sink that down into the ground. What the D shape does is stops it rotating in the ground. Then run it up out of the ground here to my little support collar. That suspends the loop over the over the trail. Okay, now this isn't final yet. I have a few tweaks to do with it. I've just uh, got it up and running for the sake of the video. I have to centralise it yet over that, over the trail. Now I cut that trail in with a strimmer. And then I just walk it in, okay, and I get three to four foxes a year on this. I have no livestock on this ground, so it's a, I can leave it here year round without any issues. And that's it pretty much. Now I know that snare is standing out, okay, but I probably will change that snare. Um, the vast majority of the time the fox is going to be travelling at night time anyway, he's not going to see that. And that's up maybe six to eight inches, seven, eight inches off the ground. Every time I set at that height, I get a neck snare. Okay, I don't set any lower than that. See the grass out there beyond that, the rushes that the fox is traveling through. Okay, he's not going to be traveling with his head low, he's going to be looking up that path as he's going along. Behind it, there's a crossing for a little small bit of a corner here I planted with a uh, Sitka spruce, and that goes out, on out then into a bog. So it's a great pathway for him. Put it in with the strimmer, walk it in. Excellent. No doubt he was probably on his way up to the other side, up with them trees there. It's where we have all the hens free ranging and the ducks free ranging. So it's good to get this guy out of it. I've probably eight, nine foxes shot around here uh, at night time over the last two months. And I know there's more in the area. When you have a bog out here, forestry in the distance, it's just a highway for them. You may thin them down, but you never be rid of them. That's the setup I use when I'm snaring on trails. So if you're not near like a fence line, if you're not near like a ditch line, if you're not near something that you can secure uh, your snare to, the traditional fastening clip, 
earth anchor a fantastic way to go the way to get that out of the ground then is you may be fortunate enough if you're strong enough to pull it up out of the ground you may have to dig it out with a spade or a shovel okay but another way that i usually do it is i don't have any now at the minute i probably have them set out is i'd have another nut welded on down uh sorry on this side okay at the very end and what that does is i have another length of wire attached to it obviously shorter than this one and once that goes down to the ground and it rotates what i do is just make a little hole in the ground and fold the wire into it for the piece that's on the back and when i want to remove it rather than having to dig it out i just open that little hole pull the wire out attach my bar into the loop that will be attached on the back up here and pull it and what that does is because it's attached at the very back on the underside of it as you pull up it forces this to rotate and allows for easy removal out of the ground okay it might sound a bit trivial but i'm sure if you look it up there on google removable air tankers there's any amount of pictures of them i'm sure there's a few video tutorials i'm sure there's even a few places selling them all right but a handy way to spend an evening making up some kit rather than you having to buy it and pay an extortionate price to get it in from the uk right simple nut bit of pipe or tube three mil galvanized wire some screws or sorry some nuts the best thing to do with these nuts first is heat them till they go cherry red okay because if you try if you buy them from the hardware shop and you try to hammer them on okay what will happen is either they'll split on the sides or if they don't do that what will happen is they start chiseling into the wire because they're a hardened nut right so heat them cherry red put them into the stove heat them with a gas torch do whatever and then they're very uh, workable. You'll be able to hammer them on with no issues. Okay. Enjoy. Happy trapping. 10th of February 2021. A nice mink in a cage trap here. Good size. Fairly calm at the minute. Said nice big bridge here. The water a few days ago was right up where the dog food is that I'm going to use for the rebaiting. And a couple of nice hard frost the water's drop right back down. We can get this guy dispatched now with the HW110. Reset done. Trap covered back over. That ground is stinking the mink there at the minute. It's very musty smell of it. That's him. Good sized buck mink. And the HW110 beside him. Handy for dispatching mink like that. Ordinarily I'd put the trap into the water and wash it out. But that lovely musky smell there now will... Act as a draw along with the dog food for the mink in the area. Okay, we've just come upstream about maybe 100 meters from where I'm after dispatching that one in the cage with the HW110. Another cage trap on this side of the bank, and we have a mink dead inside in it. it minus five last night, so you can see all the grass pulled up inside in the cage um, as they tend to do, but the frost probably got the better of this one. It looked like she was wet going in, so she may have ran the river bank. Came up, went in, and froze. Um, there's two mink off the one stretch of river. And the one day, or the one morning. We have the 116 body grip over here at the corner, and then back up underneath there with the cage trap set just off to one side of the of the incoming water. The mink's near then, just back up underneath this tree. This is the second mink I've got over here. I got one just before the Christmas time, and it's a it's a welcome addition. Because it seems to be proving it's worth on this side of the bank. It seems to be missing that snare for some reason. Maybe hugging the bank here or travelling high on this side, I don't know. But it's uh, it's working anyway, so. Reset done. Yeah, dog food in there. Covered back over again with grass. Heavy branch on top. Just a lovely morning to be out in general on the river. Got some help with me. Lovely morning. Another nice buck wink by the looks of them. Get him back up to the van and get a look at him. Okay, we're back at the van now. Mink on the right is the one that we shot with the HW110 in the cage trap, and that's the one I'm just taking out of the cage trap. Noticeable size difference in them. Down there is a buck wink as well, though. It's coming into well, in February now, so no doubt that they're gonna. This, this guy here is stinking. He's very, very musky smell off him. I said they're probably gonna start pairing up soon enough. A rabbit there of another one underneath me, can't really see him. We were out checking snares this morning. 
the HW110 with us as well. Just a great morning to be out.